Hey everyone, it's Joe at Synergy17 and today I'm going to show you how to use the S17 photo engraver um, for creating photo ready um, images for your laser. So anyways, um, I kind of did a sample of this a while back but this is kind of like the final. I made one version 1, this is version 2.5 I believe. Let me see. Yeah, version 2.5. So I added a few features. It looks kind of similar to the old one, but I'll show you what I've done. So let me just kind of go over everything right here. We have a sharpened image to kind of get the image, prepare it to get you know, ready um, by sharpening and unsharpening certain parts of it. We have grayscale for some people who want to go to grayscale and then change the intensity of some of the levels. Then we have finally have to convert to black and white. Um, we have an option to set back to defaults, just like you opened it, so now I'll show you what that does. We have some save setting options where you can choose some predefined settings that you saved before. We have an area here for exporting the file as JPEG, PNG, bitmap, and the uh, DPI and the compression is for the uh, JPEG and the PNG. This is simply browse where you're going to save it in the file name. And then we have about, kind of gives you some information about, about me and about the program. Help gives you some instructions on how to use it. And exit basically exits the app. And then we have, if you notice when you roll over certain things like this one, there's a little question mark on the icon. I'll tell you what that does. That just means it's clickable. So if I roll over that, it's clickable, that's clickable, that's clickable, that's clickable, and that's clickable. So anyways, I'll kind of show you um, what we can do. So let me exit out of this to start over, like we're launching it for the first time. So if you have some predefined settings, um, I'm calling this the mini mode where it's uh, all compact. If I click on the expand, you'll see a lot more options here. And also when it says border, grayscale options expand, you'll see more options here. So if you already know what you want, like you already have your settings made, if I choose like tile black paint, you'll watch, you'll see all these things kind of change into position. So uh, let's say sample one. See how they're all, there's invert colors check, this moves over, all these things. So anyways, if you have a setting, you can choose it and it'll, pre and it'll preload all the settings you had for that particular uh, item you want to um, prepare your graphic for. So even though it's collapsed like this, whenever you change these, it is changing those options. You just don't see it. So it's a, it, it's a good way, like in, in case you want to keep this small and you just want to say, hey, I already know what I'm doing. I'm doing a half tone or I'm doing a black tile, uh, tile or I'm doing some leather or whatever you're doing. You can simply do that and not worry about the options. But if you want to do more customization, you're going to want to expand um, some of these. So uh, let's get started here. So let's say we just want to simply start by taking something like this and we're going to sharpen the image on it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I could take these options here, unsharp mask, radius, threshold, sharpen level, and sharpen threshold. And I can mess around with these options here. Um, and then I can hit the sharpen. So I'm going to just choose this uh, this setting, predefined setting, see sharpen image, and you'll see this kind of highlighted some uh, areas here. Let me undo so you can kind of see what that did again. Sharpen image, and you can see it change. Now let's say I want to change this bump this way up. I'm just trying to show you what changes here. Doesn't matter. I'm just kind of going around with these different values just to see, so show you. See how you saw the white kind of pop a little bit more here. I'll do it again, sharpen. So you can mess around with this and get this exactly how you want it to be. And um, or like I said, and once you kind of perfected what how you like it for your type of material, you can save these settings here. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to just click on the save settings and it opens up this folder and all they are simple text files so you can make your own so let's say I had a new one like sample one we'll just see what it's in there so it just gives you basically these values and these values let me close this are equivalent to what you see here so if I chose the sample one here you'll notice that this it says a hundred hundred three three um, on sharp mask sharpen level, sorry, sharpen level one. So anyways, you can see all these numbers. And even though you don't see, there's the conversion intensity, it's right here, 75. The resolution is 250, which is here. 
uh, invert colors means I want it checked. If you put zero, it'll uncheck it. Uh, the conversion method, whether you want to do Jarvis, Stucky, or Halftone, that's also what you put right here. The brightness contrast, these ones are for the grayscale. I'll show you that here. So let me open this back up. You'll see that the brightness is 20, contrast is 40, intensity is 71. And then you'll see a couple of options here that you don't see, which is degree, square, and LPI. That's if you were to change this method to um, halftone. So I'll change halftone. You'll see more options here. So when you choose halftone, you'll see degrees, um, the screen type, and the lines per inch. So let me close this one. Since this sample one here, sample one and sample two, don't choose the uh, halftone method, that's why you don't see these. But if I chose halftone sample, you'll see that it chooses halftone and then makes them, uh, and then adds those values there. So anyways, that's how the settings file works. So you can easy, easily uh, copy this one and create a new one if you want. And then you can, like for example, I can copy this and then I can call it, uh, let's say I'm making this for leather. Let's call it leather. Close that. You need to restart this, so exit that, restart it, and then you'll have a leather option. So it's that simple. And you can go in there and change, like I said, you can uh, go back into here and go into the leather options and change all these settings here and it will reflect when you pull down this menu it'll actually change all those options to the settings you made. So it's a great way for once you dial down what you want it'll you can save those settings into a text file. So that's a, a cool feature there. Um, let's go back to let me expand this again. So let's go ahead and just take this step by step. I'm going to take this guy and I'll choose this default one right here. So let's sharpen the image. Okay, now I'm going to open this here so you can see the grayscale options. I'm going to leave it the way it is here. I'm going to say grayscale. And so you notice that this changed it to a grayscale option here. And it applied, sorry, let me zoom out over here. It applied these options to the grayscale. So let me undo this. And just to show you, if I change this brightness really high, then hit grayscale, you'll see it's really bright and washed out. So go back to this option here. So anyways, grayscale. And then um, if you're ready to go and you're done, you can simply say convert to black and white. And it's going to use this method here with this intensity down here. So if I want to do the stucky method, I can say convert to black and white. And you'll see that it's ready to go. And then you would take this and you can say export as, uh, if some people want JPEG, some people want a BMP, you can just say JPEG, BMP, um, give it a name, let's call it Wolf. Wolf test. You need to browse where you want to put it. Let's put it under pictures. Um, that's fine, we'll just go into pictures right there. And then you just simply say um, export file. And it'll tell you, hey, I finished saving it in user Joseph pictures directory. So now I can go here into my pictures and I should have here's the wolf test BMP and here's the wolf test JPEG. So you can see it right here. That's how you can basically delete those. So that's how you can uh, save your photos when you're done. So I'm going to go back one level. I'm going to undo this. Let's see. I'm now I'm back to where it was black and white. I'll actually go back one more. So I'll go back to grayscale like I showed you there. Now here's another option here. This one here is to apply a feathered border. Some people don't want a square, um, they don't want a square, uh, uh, just a perfectly square graphic. They want it feathered. So that way if they have a piece of tile, they don't want it sharp edges. So here's something else you can do. You can take your graphic, let me zoom out a little bit, and then you could um, apply a feathering to it. So I have ellipse, circle, rectangle, or square and then there's white, black, and transparent backgrounds. So what this does is, let me see, I can collapse this way so you can see this. I'm going to apply this as a square and you'll see, watch, watch right here. You see how it kind of feathered it a little bit? I'll zoom in, see how it's kind of feathered? So that way, um, I'll undo that so you can see what happened. If I did a circle, apply it, you'll get this feather. 
and you can control the offset here and how much it fades. So let me undo. So if I had to offset more like 125, it's not going to do too much of it. See how it kind of feathered it further away versus if I feather it way down here, I'm going to get this little small part. So that's what that part, how that works. So you set that to a value that works for you. And so 100 usually works. And like I said, and then the fade, this, let me drop this or put this way up to show you what it does. So it feathered it all the way from here to the edge. Now let me bring this over here. And you'll see that how it feathered it um, a little bit differently here. See, it's, it's really, let me zoom in. It's a sharper, it's a sharper circle edge instead of being a really soft. So bring that back. So anyways, um, and then you're probably wondering what the black transparent is. So what this does here is if I say I want a black uh, background, I can apply the feather. Let me just do a square again. You see, it just makes it black here. That's all it does. So even though when I said it was white, it looks like it looks like it's a uh, transparent. It's really not, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let me just grab something right here with the color. So let's watch this again. If I kept this white and I say apply that feather, see it's still white. Well, what you can do is you could say transparent and then apply this and you'll see the difference. See how there's no, it's not white or black around here, it's actually a transparent uh, graphic. So if this was a different color, you'll see that it's actually a transparent. So then you can see that as a PNG if you want, if you need that. So it just kind of depends on what you're doing. But um, anyways, once that part's done, let me get rid of all that stuff. Delete this guy. So whenever you're done, so the process is when you're done doing your feathering, let's do a feathering one more time, that's when you convert to black and white, when you're ready. So when, once you've done your sharpening, your grayscale, your feathering, then at the end when you're ready to make it ready for a laser, uh, convert to black and white. And then you can send that off to your, um, as a file for engraving. So anyways, that's kind of how it works. Okay, I'll zoom in here, we'll try another one. I'll just do this halftone sample. So I'm going to expand this so you can just see. I'm going to choose a halftone sample. I'm going to sharpen the image. Let's see if it gets sharpened. Uh, I'll go, do the, go ahead and do grayscale. Um, like I said, I didn't make any particular settings for this one. And then um, down here for halftone, since I have halftone set instead of the other one, it's going to use these values down here, round and lines per inch. And then I can convert to black and white. And now it now will use the halftoning. Uh, method for uh, for con doing the conversion. So let's undo this. Um, but anyways, it's really about you playing around with your settings and getting them the way you want for your material. And once your material is great, then I would remember those, go up to here to save settings, and create a file for it. And then every time you choose a setting, they'll load it up. Okay. Now what this is here is this was someone asked me about um, could you uh, give them specific settings for their laser? So remember, these settings are settings for the graphic. This setting here is, I don't know your laser. I don't know if you have a 30 watt, 40 watt, 50 watt, 100 watt. I don't know what type of laser you have, so I can't tell people settings. So all this is is a simple text file that you can edit and, and uh, make notes. So if you click it, it launches this here. And let's say, like, I have a universal 660. I can say, hey, for white tile, uh, painted black, I like to use uh, power, 90% uh, speed, um, let's just say uh, 150, oops, sorry, 100, and percent, and then let's say PPI, I want to do 500. Anyways, and I just put some other values in here, like Trotec, Epilogue, whatever you want, what, what you have, but you might want to make, this is just a text file for you to keep notes, so you might say, hey, uh, now I have one for leather, and I want to change my power settings, so you can now, for the same laser, maybe I want to do this and say uh, leather and give it some different values. I want power to be 60, speed to be 90, etc. So you can do that for each of your uh, types of material. So you're doing acrylic and so forth. 
Uh, it's all at a simple text file, so that way, if you forget what your settings are, you can go into here, click here, and say, oh yeah, I'm doing acrylic today, and then make your laser set to the settings. So, nothing fancy there, besides a, a notepad is all it is. So, uh, anyways, um, if I think of anything else I want to add, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to the, to the program. But for now, um, that's what it does. So, like I said, if you, once you have your settings all dialed, all you do is simply pick what you want, edit your graphic, um, and it's good to go. So I'll do one more example. Let's just say, let's all go back to the tile one. Sharpen the image, grayscale it, convert it, and then tiger test, and then export the file. Oops select it first, export it, it says it's done, I can go back to my folder, and there's my BMP, and there's my JPEG. So, anyways, hope you find it useful.